Hi, I'm Ben, the Top Chef, and today we're going to be making two key cheeses. One of them, ham and cheese, and the other one, sun dried tomato and basil. So, let's get started. So, first, we want to start with our Charlotte Crisp pastry. So, first, 50 grams of very cold butter chopped up into little cubes. So, one centimetre square. Next, 50 grams of lard, again cold and in one centimetre cubes. Then, 225 grams of plain flour into a large bowl. Add in two grams of salt, the butter and the lard. And just Separate all the cubes of butter and lard to make sure it's all coated in flour. Start rubbing it together with your fingers. It should eventually start to look a bit like the consistency of sand. Maybe four or five minutes to get this far. You can do it in a food processor if you want. There you go. Now, I'm going to use some ice water, about 45 to 60 mils, and just Sprinkle it with your hands, only a little bit at a time. You want to add as little water as possible and use a butter knife to cut it through. It helps it be a lot more even. I think it needs a bit more. The ice makes it colder, which stops the butter and lard from actually melting in the flour. So at the moment it's just really tiny pieces of butter and lard in there, it's not actually melted. And there. And there we are. Looks about right now. So now, I'm going to gently try and form it together into a ball. If it won't form together into a ball, that means you need a little bit more water in it. Just repeat the butter knife method again. Be cautious, you don't want to have too much water. And now, to the bowl, just give it a light knead, only one or two turns. You want to work it as little as possible. Oh yeah, it's nice and cohesive now. So that's good. Now I'm going to wrap this in cling film. And leave it in the fridge for about half an hour. This just lets the gluten settle down and makes it easier to work. So I'm using a perfo baked tin, it's a 25 centimetre tin. So now, we're going to flour our work surface, slightly and evenly. I'm going to get our rested short crust out. Flatten it a little bit by hand, let's get it into a sort of puck. And then, use a preferably stone or marble rolling pin because it keeps it cool. Flour of course and evenly try to spread it out without getting any cracks. If you get any big ones while well, it's still thick, you can smush them back together. Just try and keep it as round as possible. Now there we are, I like my pastry quite thin on quiches, so it's what I've done. So measure it by either uh, with the tin. You need to thin it out with more in some areas to do it. And there we are, so now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more flour on it. What I'm going to do is use the rolling pin to roll the pastry up around. This bit's where it gets a bit tricky. And without it sticking to itself, I'm going to hold it, slide the tin under, and roll the pastry out into it. There we go. So now I'm going to carefully press the pastry in without ripping it or getting any holes in it. You want it to keep the shape of the actual tin, so you want the little ridges in the outside. It doesn't matter if there's any hanging over, because what we're going to do is just tear some of it off. We want to leave a decent amount, maybe 10 mil. Now we're going to put some greaseproof paper in and add some baking beans. You can use like dried peas and stuff, but baking beans is better. Trim the edges of the baking paper so it doesn't burn in the oven. And now we're going to blind bake for about 15 minutes 
at 108 degrees Celsius on convection. So now that's baked. But very carefully because they're very hot. Tip out the baking beans back into the tub. You can keep the greaseproof paper if you're doing another one. And now, using your sharpest knife, carefully trim the now baked pastry around the edge. Don't damage your knife on the edge of the tin though. This is a turning knife I'm using, it just seems to be the one I picked. Seemed like it would work well. But any sharp knife will do, preferably a smaller one. Get it all trimmed up nicely. And doing it this way means it doesn't shrink. Because all pastry is going to shrink. And now, you smack your basil, it'll release the flavours a lot more. Breaks down the cell walls. So, with this one just add as much as you want in. I'm doing a whole jar of sun-dried tomatoes and about 10 basil leaves. Drain most of the oil off the sun-dried tomatoes because it'll be really greasy. So now we're going to use 300 mils of milk and five eggs, season with some salt and pepper to your liking to make the filling. Now I know I'm not showing that here, I'll change it later because it works a lot better, just trust me. Five eggs, 300 ml of milk, whole milk, don't use semi skimmed or skimmed, it's not milk. Let's tip that in. Some people like to do this while it's resting in the oven so that you don't spill it as easily. But now we're going to get onto the ham and cheese. So, I'm cooked this ham myself, but I'm using about 250 grams of ham chopped up into small cubes, again, about a centimetre. I think this was a honey mustard blazer ham, this ham, so it's really nice. And then, about 250 grams of uh, strong cheddar trees. You don't want to go too, too strong, but you don't want it to be mild and weak. You can scrape that, spread it out evenly in the tin. Spread your cheese out on top. You want the cheese on top so it crisps up. You can add other things to make it fancy. I changed the cheese out. If you changed it to bacon and Gruyere cheese, you'd have a quiche Lorraine. And then fill it and put it into bake. You want to bake it for about half an hour. Again, 180C fan oven. So once it's cooled, take it out of the tin carefully. Now you see the bottom are nice and crisp and not soggy. No one wants a soggy bottom. That's because of the blind baking. And now we're going to cut it up. I cut each one into quite a few slices just because this was for a garden or street party. So it was sort of finger food. Again, use your sharpest knife for this. You just take your time with it. If you notice any cracks, in the actual crust, use it as a place to slice it, so no one will know there's been a crack there. So there we go, it's all sliced up. Get that put onto a plate. There you go, you can see there's nice, decent sized chunks. They're not too big, but not too small. On for the next one. Again, nice crisp bottom, not soggy. And just use where there's cracks as the lines to cut from. Because that way it doesn't look like a crack, it's just a cut. And there we go, all sliced up. So now, it's time to serve. Of course, 
try it first. So, as for the crispy top, and it tastes amazing. So next, onto the sun dried tomato and basil. Again, it's nice and firm, not overcooked. And mmm, that's amazing. So much better than anything you'd buy in a shop. The great. It has a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Bye.